Hey folks, it's Tracy here with RX Aptek. We're uh, going to do a catch can installation on a new 2018-2019 F-150 with the EcoBoost. A uh, few things are different from 2016 and up. Uh, one, the grill does not open with the hood any longer, so we don't mount the can behind the grill like the earlier videos. Uh, what we do is there's these two brackets will come, and with this going downward, you're going to just bolt these two pieces together. And we're going to remove a 10 millimeter bolt here on the end of the coolant tank. This is going to slide underneath. You're going to bolt it down. And that allows us to place the catch can in this area right here. So first thing we're going to do, 10 millimeter socket, is we're going to take the engine cover off. It's secured with these two bolts, two nuts, excuse me. And make sure you don't drop those. We're going to remove the oil fill tab and set this aside. Now, several of the pieces that we're going to be taking off, we're going to set aside, put it in a big Ziploc, save it. If you have any concerns on uh, a warranty visit, you can simply just take the system off Put your stock pieces will all snap back together. Very simple, shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. So, now uh, I'm going to set this aside. We're going to take the engine cover off, lift up, pull straight toward you. This is going to allow us to access what we need to. There are two places on the engine that we're going to be making changes. We're going to the intake manifold right here. This pipe is what currently brings the crankcase vapors directly into the intake. And that's what we're trying to avoid. And this snaps right off. Again, you're going to set that aside. We include the uh, same type of OEM connectors for the cans, so you're not going to have to worry about that. We're going to unsnap. Using the flat blade screwdriver, the flow sensor, which is right here. You just have to move the clips off to the side, and this will come right out. As you can see right there. And we're going to set that aside because we still need to hook that back up. We're going to do the same thing, remove the stock line here. And we're gonna set that aside as well. Now that we've got that, next step is we're going to remove the top portion of the air box here. Loosen this clamp. And you've got these snaps. Knocking the camera over. There we go. So what we're going to do is take a half inch drill bit. And we're going to pick a spot right here. This is the filtered portion. We're going to drill into... center area here, clean up any of the plastic, we're going to take our 
three ace NPT tap. So you can just take a simple adjustable wrench, only go about halfway in. So we're going to screw in this 90 degree fitting. Again, don't run that tap more than halfway through because we want that to seal snugly on the threads. So as you can see how that is when it's done. We also include a set of these plugs that match this. So if you did want to go back to stock, you remove this, screw this in, and it uh, looks like stock. Same thing as we generally tap into both turbo inlets, but on this one we're only going to do the driver's side, so we're not drilling into the other side at the customer's request. But there will be two of them, so you could plug each side to, if you have a concern, a warranty concern. Again, by federal law, this cannot void your warranty under the Magnuson Moss Act. This in no way deletes, defeats, or reduces the function of the PCB system as it's designed. It only enhances it, increases its function, increases fuel economy, and reduces tailpipe emissions. So it, uh, it can in no way cause any issues that would affect the warranty. That does not mean an unscrupulous dealer won't give you a hassle and that's why we include this stuff. If there's any doubt whatsoever, it takes 10 minutes, take it off, put, snap your stock pieces in, and go to the dealer. Okay, now we're gonna reinstall this. here. Tighten our clamp back down. Now we're going to This part here is only used on the 2016 and up. What this does is we're relocating the, they call it a flow sensor, it's actually a map sensor, manifold absolute pressure. It will measure suction or pressure present on the clean side of the PCB system. So we're gonna take this sensor right here. We're going to put it into the end of this 3 ace hose on the T-assembly. We're going to make sure it's all the way on because it's not very long. We're going to use the included clamp and clamp this. Again, we didn't cut any of the stock fittings or lines, so that all can be reused. Now this will tee into the line that is going to go between the clean side separator that replaces the oil fill cap and the top portion of the um, air box. You can see there's plenty of room to do it. This will prevent the check engine light from coming up. We're going to cap the stock fitting because we're no longer going to use this. The incoming filtered fresh air is going to come in through the clean side separator that replaces the oil fill cap. So make sure that this cap is secure on there. And okay, we're replacing the stock oil fill cap with one that we've modified a base. You're going to put that base in. Might be a little difficult, a little tight. Give it a quarter turn so it goes down and seals. And then from now on, you just turning clockwise, pull this off. It's gonna seal with these two O-rings here. 
There's always a little of this green assembly grease in there to make sure that it'll slide down in there okay. And we're going to cut a piece of hose now. It's going to go between here and here, and the sensor is going to tee right into this. So, grab my hose, and more than enough will come with your kit. And the hose cutter, you can use a razor blade if you're careful. If you're clumsy, we don't want you cutting your finger off, so be careful. All right, this is going to now go on one side of this flow sensor T. Other side is going to go on to the clean side separator. Then we're going to go from that to the top of the air box. We don't cut all these pieces to length because some people choose to mount the can in a different location. We just send you more than enough hose, easy to cut. If you make a mistake, we include extra. Alright, so we're going off this end of the T, we're going into the top of the air box. And now this prevents the check engine light, and that'll all be concealed under the engine cover. All right. Next thing we're going to do is go back to the mount for the can. 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove this. We're going to switch to a 7 16 for the lock nut washers that attach these together. You'll be able to, a little too tight, so that you can angle and orient this to fit the clamp on the can. We're going to put this together like this and the can down there. So before I bolt that in, we're going to take the can and now is a good time probably to show you to drain it. It's a high quality quarter turn check valve that is open, sideways is closed. Make sure that you, when you drain this, Check it first at say 2,000 miles. Uh, the 2016 and up does not have as big of a problem as the 14, 15, maybe it's 16, maybe it's 17 and up. So it will not be trapping as much. Ford has made some progress on this, but you still need to contain anything you drain and dispose of it as you would any drain oil properly. Do not dump this out. So we're going to be facing this with the clamp opening to this side. We're going to spread the clamp so we don't scratch. Again, see where we're at. We're going to tighten the clamp itself, and that will secure it. We're going to take out these two quarter twenty bolts, again, seven sixteenths or eleven millimeter going to mount like this so we go in the slots into the clamp And we're going to test 
test it again to make sure we're clearing everything, which we are. Uh, can cannot be more than a 15 degree angle. There's a very slight angle on this. And you want to have your height so you can go right underneath the area between the intake tube here where it splits. We're going to put our 10 millimeter back in. We're going to tighten it up. <clears throat> From here, we're going to start running our lines. Now, the first line we're going to run is going to go from the center of the can. There will be no check valve, and it's going to go to that brown fitting on the valve cover right there. That fitting is actually a check valve as well, so it's a little redundant. That's a plastic one. We're going to have billet aluminum ones. So. I'll grab our check valves. <clears throat> We're not going to have a check valve again in this one right here. We're going to take our hose. We're going to run it through here and across the front. <clears throat> and make it a little long because you're going to want to go through this little cavity here so that your engine cover fits without issue. Now, this is a little difficult. You can put some WD-40 on here. Spit works. You're gonna force this on. And get it up in as far as you can. It won't come off and it won't leak. Once that's in, this just snaps into place and locks in. We're going to make sure again this is long enough. We're going to cut. And we're going to slide it onto the center barb itself. No clamps are needed on any of these fittings. Once they're on, they don't come off without slitting the hose with a razor blade. Okay, we've got that there. We're going to now orient this left side fitting. So that's going to the side like that. And this one's ultimately going to go to the intake manable vacuum cooler. <clears throat> that port is going to have a check valve. So, again, get this on. Make sure you lubricate it. Spin it while you're forcing it on. Check valve is going to go in line, flowing away from the can and toward the intake manifold. So this again, you're going to tuck this down so that it comes around the front here, making sure you're not in the way of Serpentine belt. Put it down in. Engine cover will have enough room that that hose will go just to this side of it and protrude out the front here. We're going to cut the line. Give us enough room for the check valve. Again, check valves always flow away from the can. There's an arrow. Blow through it both ways to ensure that it's working properly before you install it. And lubricate the end. Push it into the hose. We're verifying the arrow is pointing away from the can. Cutting our
short piece here to complete the connection. And our last one, make sure these fittings are tight on the top of the can, will be oriented. So it's going down underneath and it's going to go directly to this barb that we took that first line off that did originally go directly to this barb. So we're taking, again, one of our OEM fittings, checking our length of hose here. Okay, again, away from the cam. Seat that in good. Put the other shorter piece on. Looks like this. It's going to feed right through here. And snap into that barb that is down on driver's side turbo unit too. Make sure you're down and snapped and it will clip in. Cut off any excess here. And get it pushed on snug. sure there are no kinks in the line and everything looks good there so with the exception of putting the engine cover on we now have our flow sensor in line we have our primary evacuation suction source filtered fresh air comes into this side of the engine travels around the camshafts down the oil returns through the center of the crankcase all the while it's flushing and making up for the foul contaminant laden vapors that are being evacuated or sucked out the passenger side. Check valves go in the outer lines which are evacuation lines. When you're not in boost, intake manifold provides that evacuation suction. When you transition into boost, this primary check valve will close because it will detect the boost pressure from the intake manifold. The secondary valve will open and it will use the suction generated by the Venturi effect of the airflow past that barb on the driver's side turbo inlet. Now for optimum in-boost evacuation suction, we would tee both turbo inlets together. That would be this larger one, don't go on the boost pipe and we'd go down as close as we could down in there to the turbo and then we'd run another line to a T so they're teed together and then one of those would come up as a secondary outlet. But if you're not driving hard, this is just fine the way it is with just using the one and then we're not drilling any holes or anything other than this easy to plug one here. So what we're going to do before we put the cover on is we're going to uh, uh, start this, make sure there's no check engine light, there's no vacuum leaks, and everything is operating properly. So, Brian, do you want to start up your car here? Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to test to make sure everything's working properly. And we can do that by removing the oil fill cap, place your hand over and it should within a couple seconds build suction up so it's pulling your hand down in. And this does, so we're all good there. And we'll put the engine cover on and we'll be done. Any check engine light? Good. Better off. reinstall the engine cover and even though this isn't the simplest install it is pretty straightforward 
The most confusing part is the flow sensor. Okay, so we're going to position this, get it down on the studs. We're going to put our oil fill cap back down in, make sure it's secure in all rings. We're going to take our two 10 millimeter nuts, our M6. Going to start those. And if you look at this, nothing looks out of the ordinary other than the you can see the can itself and the clean side separator. Well, my old fingers are having a little hard time, so we'll try it this way. There we go. And the installation is complete.